mighty it will arisen. The time for thou to make thy choice is come. Show me the path thou wouldst walk. Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about the end game in Dragon's Dogma 2, the unmoored world. This will be a full quest guide and I'll be throwing in a little tidbits, tips and tricks here and there as well. So in order to activate this ending, once you get to Moon Glint Tower, you will need to initiate the fight with the Red Dragon. Simply shooting him, hitting him with anything will activate this fight. And then, the, after a few cutscenes, you will be on top of his back. When on his back, you're going to need to climb to his heart. And then when you start hearing a heartbeat and your character starts glowing, is when you want to go into your inventory, pull out the God's Bane Blade, and use it on yourself. This will activate the true ending path and will send you to the unmoored world. A few things to note inside the unmoored world is that there is a time limit. Every time that you rest at an end, this time limit will tick down. So if you rest too much at ends or rest too much in general, the game will initiate an end state and you will be forced into a new game plus. In this endgame, you'll also encounter new quests, new areas, new bosses, new enemy types as well. As well as most of these new enemy types will drop materials for the endgame weapons you can find from the Dragonforge vendors. Also, as soon as you get into this world, I'd recommend going to Bak Batal immediately. You'll notice that your pawn is missing and you will need to go to Bak Batal. A quest will pop up for you and you will talk to Phyzus. Phyzus is taking care of your pawn, go talk to him, and your pawn will be back into your care. Before leaving, make sure you talk to Phyzus and Ambrosius. This is very important for activating another quest line inside of the end game. Next time you find a vendor or merchant, make sure you check their inventory because you'll probably see some nice goodies and weapons in there that will help you out if you're coming into this from new game. So in reality, you're capable of doing most of these quests at any time you want. I would just recommend not resting or sleeping too much and going for the quest lines and the red beacons in the sky as soon as you get into this world. Maybe sleep like once to get a checkpoint, but other than that, I'd recommend just going straight to do objectives and quest lines. As soon as you enter the unmoored world, you'll get this cutscene here that will basically tell you Hey, you need to go here. Alright, after exploring a little bit, you can go to the Seafloor Shrine. There should be a giant blue beacon in the sky pointing you to go there. If you go there, you will initiate a conversation with some NPCs, and you'll get a new quest line to evacuate the leaders and people of the world that you're in. If you remember to talk to Phyzus and Ambrosius when you guys your pawn back, and then you go to Volcano Island, you will start a new quest line with them and resurrect Talos, otherwise known as Colossus. After doing this, a few cutscenes will play, and you basically just need to wait until Talos finishes his job, and you will be rewarded with some XP gold and warm life crystals. When you're going back to Bak Batal to deal with the beacon, make sure you speak with their leaders first so you can resolve some of the issues. If you activate the beacon, this may get locked out, so I'd recommend doing this first before doing the beacon. So some of the civilians around the town are having problems resolving issues. You basically need to go around and help everyone out. There will be a duel. All you have to do is observe the duel for a minute. 
and they will realize, oh, we're in the wrong, and they'll stop fighting. That will resolve that one. The next one will involve two adults arguing with some little kids. After they're done arguing, you want to approach one of the little kids, give them some food, and this will resolve this issue. The next one, you will see another group of people fighting. Just approach them, they will aggro on you. Make sure you just get close. Then when they start hitting you, your pawns will retaliate against them. This is just one of the ways I found to deal with it. This was the fastest way. And this will resolve that issue. So there's probably multiple ways to deal with these issues, but these are the ways that I dealt with them. After doing this, simply return to Bakbatal's leaders, and you will eventually speak with the queen, I guess. And you'll be rewarded with some XP, gold, and warm light crystals. And this will evacuate Bakbatal. After solving Bakbatal's issues and speaking with the queen, go outside and deal with the beacon inside of Bakbatal. When you activate the beacon, a cutscene will play and a dragon statue will appear. This will cause a bunch of enemies to summon inside of the town. Physis will begin talking with you. Just follow Physis. After following Physis, he'll eventually lead you to the other side of the statue where it is unprotected. Simply lift up the statue, walk out of its protective circle, and this will complete the beacon in Bakbatal. With Bakbatal completed, you can easily do any of the quests, any of the beacons, and any of the evacuation events as you see fit. All of the beacons outside of Bak Patel will be near the major cities that we need to evacuate. So when you go to evacuate the town, I'd recommend doing the beacon while you're there as well. There will be one in the Elven village, one in Vermin, the main capital city, and one on the volcano encampment. Every beacon that you activate will summon a very powerful dragon boss unit. There is the worm variant and then there is the dragon drake variant. Bring plenty of healing items, your proper vocation, and a good set of pawns. I'd also recommend bringing a thief or playing a thief yourself with a plunder as you can steal a decent chunk, about 20 worm life crystals if you manage to plunder them. Now, in order to evacuate the elves, you're going to want to go to the elven village in the north and you're going to want to speak with their leaders. After speaking with their leaders, you're going to want to rest a few times and then come back, or you can just leave it there and go to the other villages as you see fit. After resting a few times at an inn, just come back, speak to them every time you rest, and eventually they will want to come with you. So in order to evacuate Vermin, you're going to want to go talk to Sven in the castle, then he will tell you to go talk to Brant, go to the bar, talk to Brant, return to Sven, and Sven will have a list of missions for you. You will have to deal with his mother Disa, and you will have to require ox carts for him. In order to get the ox carts, you're going to want to find the ox cart vendor, and then you'll find him being harassed by a noble. All you have to do is scare off the noble, then talk to the vendor, and that will complete that part of the mission. I just use healing spells, and that just scared him off. To deal with Diza, you will need to enter Diza's room, listen to her dialogue, and then there will be an ornament behind her on the window. Pick it up and bring it to Sven to continue this. After you bring it to Sven, you'll go to Diza's room, follow him, listen in on the conversation, and then speak to him again, and this will successfully evacuate Vermund. While I was in Vermund, after completing the evacuation, I went back to the beacon 
right outside of Vermin and completed that boss. Right in front of Moonglint Tower, there is a little side quest that is easily missable if you do not go here. A cutscene will play and you will begin fighting a golem. Beat the golem and then you will initiate a conversation with Henrik and he's going to want help evacuating the pawns and anyone in the excavation site. This mission is pretty easy. Henrik will give you an overseer key. You just gotta check the nearby cabins for a godsway. After getting the godsway, return to Henrik, give it to him, and that will complete the mission, giving you some XP, gold, and wildland life crystals. In order to evacuate the people of the Bak Batal encampment on a volcano island, you'll need to go there and speak to their leader. After speaking to their leader, he will request that you help them out by saving the elf and the dwarf couple. Go talk to him, escort him back to the village, and then a new quest trying to convince Lamon to join you will appear. The easiest way to convince him to join you is to just talk about the dwarf and old couple, and that will successfully evacuate the Volcano Island encampment. After completing all of the evacuations and all of the beacons that you see on the map, at the seafloor shrine, a new beacon will appear. Go here, and this is where you decide if you want to end the game and get the true ending, otherwise known as the closure ending. As soon as you activate the beacon, this will send you into a few cutscenes and a few cinematic story events that will force you into a new game plus. But I was asked if the Sphinx is inside of the Unmoored World, and yes, the Sphinx is in the Unmoored World. The items stay the same, but a few of the quests and riddles the Sphinx gives you is bugged, so just be warned about that. By doing all this, by doing all the red beacons, by doing all the quests, all the evacuations, you will get a few trophies inside the PlayStation, Xbox, or PC versions of the game. And you have completed the Unmoored World. If you want to farm the endgame materials, there is a few enemies that are only in the Unmoored World. So be sure to farm them up before you decide to leave. Anyway, that's all for me. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, or sub, and I will see you in the next one.